So in the past few years, I've made a number of videos talking about this guy, the Trash Can Mac Pro. This is actually the second one that I've owned, uh, and this one I upgraded to build the cheapest 12-core Mac Pro that money can buy. But apart from the maxed out processor, this thing is actually pretty basic. Now, in the last couple of months, these Trash Can Mac Pros have experienced a pretty rapid decline in pricing. So with the age of Apple Silicon and decreased pricing on these, it does make you wonder, is it worth revisiting the Trash Can Mac Pro? So in today's video, what we are going to do is upgrade this thing to the absolute max. And in order to do that, I've had to buy this, another Trash Can Mac Pro. So get subscribed because you won't want to miss this one. So what the heck is going on here? Why do I have two Trash Can Mac Pros? These things are pretty terrible. In all of the previous videos that I've done talking about them, they have to some degree ended with me explaining why you should not buy them, but here I am with two. Well, this is the cost of upgrading a Trash Can Mac Pro to the max. Now, as today's video sponsor iFixit would tell you, the Trash Can Mac Pro has been decried as the death of upgradability, but with our ProTech toolkit and a bit of ingenuity, you'll find that that's actually far from the case. To get inside this Mac Pro, we just have to flip a simple switch on the top here, and the whole outer shell of the infamous trash can design slides right off and reveals the internals of the device. Now, once we're in here, pretty much all of the major components can be upgraded. You can see we've got our RAM dims, which are easily accessible. We can even upgrade the CPU, though it takes quite a lot of work. And even these two cards, which are the dual graphics, can be upgraded. However, they are proprietary. And that's why I've got another Trash Can Mac Pro. See, these two are actually quite complementary in terms of their specifications. This is the Trash Can Mac Pro that I've had for over a year at this point. It has the 12 core processor, 16 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage, and the dual D300 graphics cards. So basically, the processor is maxed, everything else is pretty standard. On the other hand, this new Trash Can Mac Pro that I bought recently has the 8-core processor, 16 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage, but the fully upgraded D700 dual GPUs. Now, the reason why I had to buy this entire Mac Pro is that if you want to buy the graphics cards on their own, they are unbelievably expensive, like $1,500, but I only paid $1,200 for this entire Mac Pro. So the plan for today is we are going to combine the 12-core processor from this machine, the D700 graphics from this machine, as well as maxing out the RAM and storage to make a single fully loaded trash can Mac Pro and then I'm going to sell the other one and we'll see how much it ended up costing to build the best worst Mac Pro in history. And we're gonna be doing all of that with iFixit's help. That's where I learned how to take apart these Mac Pros. They have complete detailed teardown guides if you want to do any of the upgrades that we'll be doing in today's video. You can check out the resources down below for the teardown guides for these Mac Pros, as well as links for parts and tools, such as the iFixit Protect Toolkit, which I'll be using today. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Contrary to popular belief, the Trash Can Mac Pro is actually really, really modular and upgradable, albeit a lot of its parts are proprietary. Everything from the graphics boards, the power supply, the RAM, the CPU, even stuff like the interconnect board and the I.O. can be replaced as a single part without having to do the entire machine. So today, we are going to be following iFixit's guide for replacing the dual GPUs. 
The first step is removing the fan assembly, which is held on by five T10 screws. On the inside, there's a connector board that's held on by T7 screws, and once we pull those out, the fan assembly slides out. Now, at this point, it's a good idea to give it a good dusting because after seven or eight years, this thing has gotten very, very dusty. Next are five more T10 screws that hold the bottom cover onto the device. Basically, this entire Mac Pro is just built around the heatsink and everything kind of screws on top of it. So there's no real like chassis or frame. It's kind of interesting, but you'll also notice that under here, a lot of dust gets trapped. So once again, we're gonna spend a little bit of time just cleaning it out. And now we get on to the main event, the graphics boards. Each one is clipped in with a small proprietary PCIe bridge, and then there are four T10 screws that hold in the bracket for the GPU die. And then at the bottom of the device, there are two more T8 screws that we'll have to remove. The screws at the bottom are actually a very clever design feature because they not only hold the board in place, but connect it to power as well. And then we just have to do the same thing for the other graphics board, but first removing the SSD, which is mounted here as well. And now that we've extracted the D700s from our donor Mac Pro, we have to do the whole thing again on the original Mac Pro with the 12 core processor. Yay! Interestingly enough, I noticed that the machine that had D300 graphics cards, because it has fewer VRAM chips, has smaller thermal compound applied for cooling the VRAM. So I'm just gonna go ahead and swap those over so we have full coverage of the VRAM chips on the D700s. Also interesting is the difference in the die size for the two GPUs. This is the D300 graphics board, and this is the D700. The actual die itself is massive. And at this point, we have both Mac Pros as deconstructed as they need to be. It's a little bit of a mess, but now what we have to do is clean all of the gross old thermal paste off of the GPUs and then make sure to remember which one is which so I can put the D700s on the 12 core Mac Pro and the 300s on the eight core.
So there we have it. Both machines are fully reassembled with one being a maxed out 12 core D700 machine. But we're not quite done yet because iFixit thought it would be fitting to really spice this thing up. So they sent over the Aura Pro X2 two terabyte NVMe SSD, which is built for machines such as this. So we're gonna go ahead and pop that in. Also, a friend of the channel, Ian Delora, sent over 128 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. Now, you may notice that this is half height RAM, and he says that this improves performance and airflow in the machine. So with those two things, this will now be the most powerful trash can Mac Pro that money can buy. So here it is. This is the most powerful trash can Mac Pro that money can buy. 128 gigabytes of RAM, 12 core CPU, dual D700 graphics cards with six gigabytes of VRAM each for a total of 12 and a two terabyte SSD. Now, granted, you could maybe expand the storage a little bit beyond this, but apart from that, this is as good as it gets. When this machine was new in 2013 and 2014, you wouldn't even have been able to build it. Apple only offered it with 64 gigabytes of RAM and one terabyte of solid state, but that would have cost you about $9,600. So this is easily over a $10,000 machine from seven years ago. But how much did I pay to put this together. So here's how the numbers work out and bear with me because I'm not gonna be able to provide exact specific numbers given that I bought this Mac Pro and upgraded the CPU over a year ago. And a number of things have happened since then. The Mac Pro has actually seen a bit of a price crash, so I'm gonna be adjusting for current numbers and we'll see if it's actually worth doing. I spent 1200 bucks to get the machine that I wanted that had the D700s. If you want the best bang for your buck, we're going the DIY route, so that means you're upgrading the processor yourself. You can buy the 12 core Xeon that goes in one of these for about 140 bucks. It's really not a very expensive processor. Uh, you can also buy 128 gigabytes of ECC RAM for about $300, and the Aura X2 SSD costs $480, which means if you wanted to build this exact Mac Pro yourself, it would run you about $2,100. That's a lot of money. Granted, yeah, that lots of RAM, lots of storage, plenty of cores, and multiple graphics cards, but is it really worth it? Well, let's run through some numbers here. Starting with Cinebench R23, the Mac Pro scores 8267, which is noticeably higher than the M1 Mac Mini, the benchmark that I've chosen to compare this to. However, it's not by all that much, and when we go over to Geekbench, you can really see the age of this processor showing up because the Mac Mini actually beats it here. If we go back to Geekbench Compute, the dual graphics definitely show their strength here with the Mac Pro outscoring the Mac Mini pretty significantly. However, if we go over to Final Cut, which has been really, really well optimized for newer devices, the Mac Pro falls behind the Mac Mini ever so slightly in both the render and the export. Moving over to Blender, we can see here that the Mac Pro flexes its cores and graphics, as well as not being hampered by a translation layer. So this does beat the Mac Mini in both the Blender BMW and the Blender Classroom test. You can buy a Dell with this exact processor for like 300 bucks, so you're paying a huge price premium. And as we saw in those performance figures, it's really not any better than a $700 Mac Mini. And this was over $2,000, and that's if you do it yourself. If you go on eBay to try to buy one that's already built, you're looking at like $2,400 to $3,000. And 
it's it's a tough sell. Although to be fair, that is from the perspective of someone like you or me that might not be using this machine in a workstation setup. So to shed some light on what it's actually like if you're using one of these all the time, Ian Delora, the guy that I mentioned earlier, who supplied the RAM for this machine, explained a little bit why these machines are actually still pretty popular, hence why they're so expensive. Hi, my name is Ian Delora, and I sell, service, and upgrade Mac Pros for a living. The Mac Pro 6 comma one, or 2013 trash can model is a very cost effective and popular workstation, especially now in 2021 since the prices have dropped on this model significantly. Unlike the new Mac Pro 7 comma 1 and the cheese grater 5 comma 1 Mac Pro, this machine isn't quite as easily upgradable and not really expandable, but offers many great benefits such as lower power consumption, almost dead silent operation, six Thunderbolt ports for connectivity and external expansion, and it looks really good sitting on your desk. Many video production studios like to use these machines because they are small enough to place on a desk, they have lots of Thunderbolt expansion, and the IO ports light up when they sense the machine turning on the desk. If you are in the market for a newer used Mac, and in particular a Mac Pro of any generation, please do not hesitate to contact me. I can offer steep discounts on new and used Mac Pro units, and I can also assist with price conscious upgrades for any and all Macs and servers if needed. Thank you. Ian's contact information is linked in the description below if you're interested in buying one of these or one of the newer or older cheese grater Mac Pros that have a lot more upgradability options. Personally, as much as I could see there being certain niche users that would find a trash can Mac Pro usable, 2100 bucks for this it has good specs on paper, but it just it doesn't feel like a $2,000 plus machine. I mean, for 2100 bucks, you can go ahead and buy yourself a pretty much fully loaded M1 iMac, which by the way, I will be comparing this to. And honestly, that's probably a better value. You get the screen, the keyboard, the all-in-one form factor. It's just as quiet as this thing. Uh, which I will say, this is a tremendously quiet device, that single fan that's on the top and it sort of pulls air through the case. It's very quiet, not super cool running, and honestly not that powerful given how much money you have to spend. So, should you buy one of these Mac Pros? <clears throat> no. <laughs> I, I really don't think you should, but I built one and now I've got it to compare to other things and I guess I'll sort of be making fun of it periodically as time goes on. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. As usual, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out iFixit parts, tools, and resources linked down below, and I'll see you all in the next video.